It's a place that people can go to and put their phones down and have a good conversation. It's not just drinking the beer, it's an experience when you go to the brewery. Local craft brewing has become a global industry, especially in the U.S. According to craftbeer.com, the majority of Americans now live within 10 miles of a craft brewery. If there's a brewery in Orlando, I've been there. There are nearly 20 craft breweries already operating in Central Florida, and even more are coming soon. On this edition of Orlando Sentinel Snapshot, we sample some local beers and share some tales from the Central Florida Ale Trail. Brewery visits are like snowflakes. It's not always the same thing twice. The Broken Strings Brewery and Black Cauldron Brewing opened under the same roof in Paramore last year. I mean, I think that's basically what makes a brewery local, is, is, is that it's owned and operated by people that have a, an interest in the local community. The Sunshine State produced nearly 1.3 million barrels of craft beer last year, ranking us sixth in the U.S. For so long, people only thought there was one style of beer to drink, Bud Light or a, a light lager. And now we have all these options from IPAs to stouts to sours to Belgians. There's just so many to choose from. 18 local breweries joined to form the Central Florida Ale Trail, which is a beer lover's guide to the area's offerings. Oh, the Ale Trail is awesome. You brewery hop, you meet new people. The best part, though, is the beer. And wherever you go, everybody's got something different. You can pick up a map at any participating brewery, and at each stop you get a stamp. When you visit all 18, you get a free, empty, commemorative growler. High tide raises all ships, so if we can raise awareness in the craft brewing scene in the area, it's, it's going to be good for all of us. You know, it's a very unique industry where a lot of others, you wouldn't see that kind of camaraderie. You, know, you wouldn't see that with the dry cleaning industry. The love of beer runs deep for some, and so does its history. It only makes sense that we get a lesson in how beer brewing is passed down from the head brewer to those eager to learn. When I asked the head brewer at Orlando Brewing what the most important aspect of brewing was. Picture marks. Brewing is all about your temperatures and your time. It's no surprise that the individual that has been learning the craft under him would sound a lot like an echo. And you have to be on point at every single piece of the puzzle. That puzzle he is referring to has been passed down from brewer to brewer through the ages. In this legacy of the craft, their introductions to work in the brew house. I basically learned from the bottom up. Started washing kegs, cleaning bright tanks. Then I learned how to filter. And now I'm working the centrifuge. And then I learned how to brew. Well, it's as systematic as brewing. So working with Graham, I started doing a couple uh, assistant brews with him. So a lot of it was me uh, shadowing him for the first couple times and just learning how to use this system. The more I found out about this process of how one learns in a brew house, I couldn't help that my mind wandered here. Wax on, wax off. Except in this case, instead of wax on, wax off, it's... Can you put up with cleaning? Because that's what 99% of the job is. It's also physically demanding work. It is craft. You know, you're doing things manually. So just how long does it take to learn for those that stick it out? Before you get really comfortable, it's probably a year or two. You get a bunch of brews under your belt before you start to feel perfectly comfortable. And for those that do love it, like Graham and Christian, life is good. Yeah, I usually get here pretty early. I put on some Grateful Dead and I just get brewing. Christian does everything else. He'll filter it and package it and carb it up and all that good stuff. So all I really have to worry about now is brewing the beer and that's kind of the way I like it. Our next stop takes us out to Claremont. While the ale trail hasn't quite made it out this far yet, a local farmer is taking the concept of a beer run to the extreme. Twice a week, Nathan Foch leaves his mountain trail farm in Claremont and drives nearly 100 miles round trip on a tour of local craft brewers. These weekly trips are not because of his love of brew, it's for his pigs. They go crazy for it. How are you? Yes. Okay, let me clarify. What they love are the leftover grains that are used to make the beer. It has grains, maybe corn, although it normally doesn't. It'll have rice, barley. It is very good. It's high protein, high fiber, and all the sugars and some of the things that are bad for livestock are taken out to make beer. And because of this, these weekly treks are a huge savings to his bottom line and mutually to the brewers. They would pay to get rid of it where farms take it from them for free. 
It's a case of one man's trash, or in this case, brewery's trash, is another man's treasure. It, to them, it's like a tea bag if you're making tea at home. And this is the waste product you throw out and then drink the tea. They do the same thing with beer. They use this to get the flavor, but then it's garbage to them. And a lot of them, from a moral standpoint, don't want to fill a landfill with something that can be used or recycled. One other benefit to this friendship and partnership with brewers is that I'm a little more connected to the rural area and the farms than they are in Orlando. And he uses his connections to help brewers find local ingredients growing in the surrounding areas. Collected muscadine grapes off of a neighbor's property, oranges. Uh, we actually collected acorns one time because they did an acorn beer. Ironically for Nathan, who says he enjoys the brewer's handiwork, he rarely gets a chance to sit in a tap room and enjoy it. Well, the farm works every day. You can't take vacation, you can't take time off. So just what exactly is beer brewing? Is it an art form? Is it culinary? I stopped by two local craft breweries to learn how their creative juices flow as abundantly as their brews. And after meeting with some brewers that throw around terms like lactic acid producing bacteria, lactobacillus, and pediococcus, I came to the conclusion that maybe this is a mad science. Just a look behind the curtain at the brewers laboring in a lab of metal tanks that boil and belch steam, it's hard not to draw that conclusion. Though the record was quickly set straight for me. It's all these things. And with all these different sides, ultimately, there's a bit of creativity involved. The way I kind of look at it, it's kind of like a, writing a song. Sometimes you have an idea what you want to write, sometimes you just get inspired, uh, sometimes it's a mix of the two. Clearly, with the amount of brewers popping up, it's evident that the craft is appreciated. Beer drinkers are becoming more adventurous and more sophisticated, and they really know what they're talking about. And as a result, brewers themselves are getting more adventurous. You know, if you look back 20 years ago, there was craft beer, but you're Options were probably going to be a pale ale, an IPA, an amber. And now, brewers are being applauded for their creativity. And I have no problem veering outside of style and making up styles. Ultimately, the people coming in and drinking the beer are going to tell me you can't do that. That being said, I was curious if there was an instance where a brew may have went too far off the rails. Like a meat beer. Wait, 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 wait. Hold the fermentation. What kind of beer? Uh, roasted sheep head brew it. Yep, you heard right. He said sheep's head. The smell was a little off-putting because it smelled kind of like soup. People knew how they felt about it right away. <laughs> it's case in point that brewers are willing to step out of the norm to entice beer drinkers. Maybe not with meat beers, but with a resurgence of sours and interesting twist on cream ales that taste like milkshakes. It gives us a, a chance to put a beer in front of you that we can almost guarantee you've never had. And within this labor of love of brewing that they have, there is a reward. Sitting and having a beer with one of your, your um your customers, and they're just really jazzed about it, going, man, that's the payoff. And customers are excited about local craft beer. We met two couples that have fully embraced the Central Florida Ale Trail. Completing the Central Florida Ale Trail just once was not enough for one Stanford couple. Here we are again, <laughs> getting more stamps. Jamie and Jennifer Beck have drank their way around the Ale Trail three times already. It's ever-changing experience because breweries are always coming up with something new. The couple's passion for local craft beer inspired their friends Robert and Laura Wilson to also start the trek. I was definitely one of those Bud Light girls. And then when this started, the, the Ale Trail, then it opened up this whole new world. And it was just like the, you know, heavens opened up and was like, oh, this is like awesome beer for you. The couples have seven children between them and conquering the Ale Trail together has strengthened their friendship. There's a lot of people that don't like beer. They just, they don't. And so it's cool to have a couple that actually goes and drinks the beers with us and we talk about it. Laura and Robert are currently chugging along on their second go round. I think it's kind of cool, you know, it's almost like a treasure map kind of thing. It's like, okay, we're going to go here and here. I'm a very visual person, so for me, it's like, I, I really like it. I think it's neat. And, and a good beer is a work of art. It's fantastic to be able to drink the their creation. And these craft creations have changed the way they drink beer. I cannot drink a Bud Light to save my life anymore. It's just not going to happen. Like. I just love craft beer now. It's just great, so yeah. Well, welcome to, <laughs> welcome to my world. Exactly, it's delicious. And that's definitely a reason to cheers. <laughs>